So number one piece of advice we give to someone getting into running is get a solid daily trainer. You want a shoe that you can do most of the bulk of your miles in that feels comfortable and you want a shoe that when you put on fits right. You want to make sure there's a thumbnail between the toe and the top of the shoe so that you're not hitting the tip of the shoe and when you run your foot expands so you need that extra space but you also want to have a good lockdown and you don't want any heel lift. And then finally, you want something that feels comfortable and cushioned under your foot. You're going to be putting in a lot of miles. You want to make sure that the shoe gets the best out of you in the run and that when you get started in the morning, you're excited to strap it on and go for those miles. So a lot of people don't know much about their foot. So first off, you should learn about your foot, whether you have a high arch, wide foot, what you need to know about your foot before you slip it into a shoe because different shoes have different fits and you're going to find certain brands are going to work better for your foot based upon their last. And when we say last, we're talking about the foot shape that they build the shoe around. You're going to look at that and you're going to look at the size of your foot and try to figure out how it's going to work with the shoe. Now, a lot of reviewers will cover that when they, if you go to YouTube and you watch reviews, they'll say this one's good for wide feet or this one's good for narrow feet and you can kind of guess if you know your foot. High arches, also something to look out for, but what you're looking for is a shoe that is fitting your foot. Again, you're not gonna have a good run if the shoe is too tight around your foot. You're not gonna have a good run if it's too loose around your foot. Now, we can also get into something called stability shoes, and that's something that we have on cushioning. The old stability was just hard posting with a heel cup that kind of held your foot in really tight so that it couldn't move around and as you came down your ankle wouldn't flex this way which is called pronation so it kind of blocks it up this way and keeps your foot narrow 90 percent of the runners don't need stability shoes in my opinion most of the times you can fix a lot of the stuff with just ankle exercises and strengthening your feet but if you do need stability you don't have to go with those old choices now there's choices that are more guidance focus where they give you a little bit more help in the midsole to guide your foot on a rail rather than having it loosey-goosey. So you can look to some of the newer shoes in the stability category and they can still be lightweight, well cushioned, and you don't have to sacrifice too much comfort to get that stability. Now you're getting serious about running and you're really enjoying it. You've got your daily trainer and you're like, you know what? I want to start doing races. I want to start figuring out stuff in the speed category. Everybody starts to push themselves once you get comfortable because you're like, how much faster can I go? So now you start talking about tempo shoes and race day shoes. And that's a whole nother category of running shoes. So when you hear us talking about tempo shoes or race day shoes in our reviews, usually what we're talking about is on tempo days, it's usually a lighter, faster shoe that can go through your stride a little quicker, may not offer some of the support that a daily trainer offers. And then when we go to race day shoes, we're talking the super shoes. So we're talking lightweight cushioning, we're talking plates, and we're talking expensive price tags. Most of those shoes are over $200 and it's really getting into the tuning of your running. So it's as you get a little more serious, you're like, you know what? I wanna start, I don't know, getting PRs and half marathons, PRs and marathons. You're gonna start wanting that super shoe. And so when we talk about categories of shoes we have, your normal daily trainer, we have stability trainers, we have wide trainers, then we get into tempo shoes, and then race day shoes. So that's pretty much how we break down the shoe lineup for us when you hear us talking about them in reviews. So when you're watching our reviews or you're reading our reviews, what you wanna look for is things that you have in common with the reviewer because a lot of things to do with shoes are very subjective. One man's trash is another man's treasure. For example, I have a narrow, high arch, low volume foot. There's certain shoes I like. If you match up to that, you're gonna know that when I'm reviewing a shoe, you're probably gonna like a shoe that I like and you're probably not gonna like a shoe I don't like. And the same thing goes with our wide foot reviewer, Jared. If you have a wide foot and you've struggled to fit your foot into normal shoes, you're gonna probably agree with Jarrett on fit and feel when it comes to shoes. So start to develop a relationship, read the reviews, check out the videos, 
and you'll see over time, you'll start to agree with one of our opinions and know that when we put on a shoe, it may or may not be the right shoe for you.